everyone, Marvin Abisha here of Intrepid Motion, and we are just wrapping up a wonderful, fun-filled, and life-changing weekend at the World Domination Summit in the beautiful city of in the beautiful city of Portland, Oregon. And we are truly honored and deeply humbled to have with us today one of the leading innovators in the fitness and personal transformation industry. His site, nerdfitness.com has a following of over 20,000 subscribers and continues to grow every day. It's my honor and privilege to introduce you all to the rebel leader himself, Steve Camp. Welcome to the show, Steve. Hey, Marvin. Thanks, Thanks for having me, man. So, uh, Steve, uh, tell us a little bit about Nerd Fitness uh, and, and the mission that you have there at, at your site. In the easiest way possible, Nerd Fitness is a site dedicated to helping nerds get healthy and feel better about themselves. Ultimately, uh, I want to say around five years ago, I had this idea that really was, I'm a nerd. You too, I, huh? I like fitness. <laughs> I think there's there's got to be something here. I think there's there's a, you know, in, the, in, a, in a Venn diagram, there is that middle section of nerds that are also interested in getting healthy. So I Googled nerd fitness, and uh, nerd fitness, nothing popped up. Mm -hmm. So I bought nerdfitness.com and Somehow, after a year and a half of kind of doing nothing with it, I just started writing articles on helping people get healthier. And three and a half years later, here I am in Portland, <laughs> sitting on a rooftop, uh, hanging out with one of my favorite people in the world, Marvin. So, yeah, yeah, man, it's, awesome. it's, it's been a crazy adventure, but a, a lot of fun. And um, the fact that I get to get a chance to really help people live better lives is, right, is right. very, um, very inspiring. It's very very humbling. It's, it's a good time. Right. I've been following your site for, for a good year or so, and I really love uh, this concept of leveling up. Can you share a little bit about how you came up with that concept? Sure. Well, growing up, I was a massive video game player. I loved playing old school RPGs like Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger. I dumped hours and hours and hours of my life into games like EverQuest and EverQuest 2. Uh, for those of you who don't know, those games are even nerdier than the World of Warcraft. So, uh, I fell in love with this concept of taking a character and watching him go from super weakling to uber, uh, uber powerful, you know, the best armor, weapons, dragon slaying, just, you know, going from zero to hero, yeah, loser yeah. to kick-ass guy, and eventually I started realizing I'm dedicating all of this time to leveling up a character on a video game, or in a video game, on a, on a computer screen or a TV screen. Why the heck aren't I putting that same level of dedication towards leveling up myself? You know, looking at life as a video game and leveling myself up as as a character. I see that. Yeah. And as soon as I made that switch, like, okay, leveling up your life, I got it. Now. Okay, uh, that makes sense. And you can you can build uh, you can build levels and have achievements and categories and um, you know, challenges and quests and things of that nature. And it just for me, it was a way for me to kind of track my life and make it way more interesting than I'm just going to the gym. It's like, no, I'm gonna go get to level 10. All right, right, you know, right. Because I haven't been able to do that many push-ups or pull-ups, but this today I can and see what the next step is. And really made my life seem a lot more adventurous than it was until things actually got really adventurous. Well, that was really astute of you because I can really see how, how that can uh, draw, draw someone in because uh, personally I was also a big Xbox gamer until I got really busy with the whole fitness and travel and blogging thing. And uh, lots of the games uh, on the Xbox actually are achievement based. So yep. I totally oh, see how you can kind of like replace one habit with a, with another one. So it, in one sense, you know, you got the nerds and they're spending all their time trying to level up and beat each other mm -hmm. uh, in whatever game that they're battling on. But now it, it actually transcends that into, you know, a, hitting those achievements. but. In, the, in a way that actually changes your life. Exactly. I, I love that. Exactly. And that's actually um, a good uh, uh, point um, because I'd actually like to switch gears a little bit here. Oh, good. Because as you know, um, at Intrepid Motion, we're all about taking bold action to create change in your life. And I wonder if you could share with our readers a little bit about your own journey um, you know, with personal transformation and change. For example, um, what, what did you do before even starting your fitness? And, and you know, taking that that path into uh, being an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So right out of college, I got a job in sales. My dad was in sales. My mom was in sales. I figured, I guess I should probably do sales. I like talking to people. Uh, selling stuff kind of seems okay. So I found a job selling construction equipment. 
in San Diego. I had a company car and a bunch of money, and I was miserable and couldn't quite figure out why. I just assumed naturally, like, okay, you get out of college, you get a job that sucks, and then you do that for 40, 50 years, and then it's like, well, then you can retire and do the things that you love, and the uh, fire truck is now in the way for us. Um, anyways, you know, we, I had this, uh, this, this really un unfortunate job, and sales is great for some people. I very quickly realized sales was not for me. So I made the decision then and there, after about a year and a half, I'll give it a second. Someone's saving a life, so it's all good. <laughs> I think that we've been driving closer to it from this point. Um, okay, you can probably hear me much better now, I hope. Awesome. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can edit. Well, actually, this is kind of funny. I was doing an interview in San Francisco, and the guy walked, the guy was, I was doing a health interview. Yeah. And the guy walked up to me and said, hey guys, do you have any cigarettes or lighters for me? <laughs> Oh yeah, with Amber. With Amber, and I was like, sorry. dude, I'm sorry, man, you're talking to the wrong, wrong people. Wrong, wrong people. She's like, we'll cut that out. I was like, oh no, this is great for the interview. You know, this is this is this is us practicing what we preach here. Uh, so anyway, so I was working this job in sales and decided then and there, after about a year and a half, that I was instead going to find a job that made me happy, and that money was not going to be my my sole driving force for the next job. So I actually took a job in marketing with the company on the other side of the country for half the money I was making before. But I got to hang out, uh, my job involved creating music festivals at sea. So we would charter giant 2,000 person cruise ships, turn them into floating music festivals, and then my job was to not only write the content and help promote and market these cruises to, to fans of the bands that we were putting on board, but then I actually got a chance to go on the cruises and make sure everybody had a good time. Uh, probably the best job I could have ever had other than working for myself. Yeah. Now, I found this job after I had already begun formulating the idea for Nerd Fitness. And really, I started as a hobby. It was like, well, I, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm a nerd, I like fitness. I don't know how this can become a business, but I think I'll just, I'll just start writing. And I wrote articles every day while working the full-time job. And after about a year and a half, Nerd Fitness, just the community had grown so large and I hadn't made any money with it yet, but I knew right. Th I knew then, like, okay, I think I have something here. I have this really kick-ass community. I have people that are that are living better lives, and it's something that you know I felt really passionate about. And something yeah. that I could control every day. I would be able to say, what do I want to do today with my life, right. and how can I improve what I'm working on? Okay. So after about a year and a half, I finally decided, like, I think, I think this is it. I think I found my calling. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not hanging out with musicians in the Caribbean on cruise ships, but it's hanging out with nerds online, helping them get healthy. So that was a, that was a big step for me to make, but yeah. uh, that, was, that was over two years ago now. Nerd Fitness has been my full-time job since then, and not for a single day do I regret the decision I made. It was, it was awesome. a very, very tough struggle for, the, for the, an entire year after quitting. Um, but since then, the past year, things have really picked up some steam, and uh, Nerd Fitness is, is, has gone from a simple blog to yeah. like an actual an actual business that's changing a lot of lives. So it's it's been very cool to see not only that transformation, but my own personal transformation from unhappy and very confused to incredibly happy and very focused on what I'm working on. And I imagine uh, even now you, you still continue to learn. It's a, it's a, Every it's day. a learning process. Absolutely. Which, uh, with a lot of jobs, um, uh, a lot of times it, it just kind of stays pretty much the same. Yep. And um, yeah. as you can imagine, um, lots of people nowadays are, are actually working in soul-sucking environments and um, they're really in a state of stasis where they're not really um, really happy about where they are but a lot of times they're, they're not as dissatisfied enough to actually make a move and, and do something. Um, what advice would you give, you know, some, having, having been through that process yourself, if you've actually, you, you just described that you actually made two job hops, yep. and then uh, from there leaped into the world of entrepreneurship. Right. For our viewers uh, who, are, who are thinking of uh, or trying to, to make this type of change, what, what, what advice would you offer them? A couple things, actually. One, I would say don't quit your day job yet. You know, a lot of people see like, oh, Steve had this job, and then he quit, and he started Nerd Fitness, and all of a sudden, like, oh, things are great, and they didn't see the, they didn't see the six months of preparation 
before launching Nerd Fitness. They didn't see the five articles a week I wrote while still working a day job. They didn't see the amount of work and hours I put in every single day for 18 months before, before quitting. And even at 18 months, my decision to quit was probably still too soon. It just ended up working out. It ended up working out for me. But when I quit, I did, still didn't have money coming in, and I didn't have very much saved up. I think a lot of people see this as I hate my day job, so I'm just going to quit and start a blog. And two months from now, I'll be living like Tim Ferriss, the four-hour work week, and life will be glorious. Like, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. Um, another piece of advice, and this is something I've, I'm very, very um, passionate about, as I finally use that word. A lot of people are like, just follow your passion and the money will come. As Chris Gillibo would tell you, it's not just passion, but it's passion that lines up with something that people are actually willing to pay for. You're like, if you're really passionate about hamburgers, like, okay, cool, unless you can convince somebody to pay you to write about hamburgers, you can't, be like a, you can't make a living off of it. If you're really passionate about playing video games, awesome, unless you can become, unless you can get so good that you become a corporate sponsored, you know, a, a gamer. professional gamer, there's right. no, it's not, it's not there. Some people love to travel, um, unless you can find a way to to leverage what how you enjoy traveling with creating a service or providing a product that people will actually buy. There's not much you, you know, it's so it's finding a way to line up what you're passionate about, what you're good at, and also what people, uh, you know, solving a really uh, solving a pain for somebody. Right. Right. For me, that people pay, pay for problem solving. People, yeah, they, people right. want people have problems, and they're going to come to you because you provide a solution for them. For me, that passion was helping people get healthy, and I think that's why Nerd Fitness was able to be successful. Was because I was very specific in what I what I wanted people to know. You come to my website, I will help you lose weight, I'll help you eat healthier, and I'll help you feel better about yourself. It was very specific. Um, and I think because of that, people showed up and they knew what they were getting. So even if I didn't have a massive following, I had a very passionate following of people that were interested. And um, last but not least, I think I yeah, just kind of covered this a little bit about hustle. Uh, Gary V has given uh, the talk that started it all. I think he calls it. If you start search Gary V, V E E, Gary Vaynerchuk Gary talk that's all. He talks about hustle and, and the amount of work that went into building what he built and how he did it. And it is so inspiring to me because so many people just see the after. Yeah. They don't see the amount of work and hours and years that went to, went into getting people to that point. So and, and that's true not only in business but even in fitness and health. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean like you, you see people I mean only those who are close to you see the before and after but a lot of times you walk in like the guy like wow you know he's just like super fit. But they don't yeah. see how much work and how much time and commitment and dedication Absolutely. it took to get there. Absolutely. So I think if if you're out there and you're working a job that you're unhappy with and it might not necessarily be something that's completely miserable, but something that doesn't make you happy. Identify things that, that do make you happy. And, uh, Cal Newport is a guy that gave a great talk at, at the World Domination Summit. Right, right. But he didn't. He didn't. He talked about specifically how following your passion is is kind of crap. You know, like it, it's up to a point. Yes, following your passion is important, but you know, instead find something that's really interesting to you. And for me, my second job was I got really interested, you know, I really liked marketing and I love music. So right. I found a job that I created that. I had to move 3,000 miles and pack my stuff into the back of a truck and drive 3,000 miles in two days to get to that job. But it was a job that interested me, that I was very excited about. And for that reason, I got really good at it. I got very good at writing. And it led you. And it led me to Nerd Fitness. So, Super. you know, it wasn't just I was in sales, I hate this, so I'm going to I'm a fitness expert. Excellent advice. It was yeah. years. I mean, it was a, it was a good four or five year process until I finally got to Nerd Fitness, and then once I got to it, then it was another two years of struggle. I mean, yeah. I did some crazy side jobs just to just to make ends meet after I quit. Like I painted the soundstage floor for rappers' music videos at two in the morning. Like not even a joke. Yeah. I did that for a side job uh, a couple days because I needed the money uh -huh. to pay my next month's rent in order to make Nerd Fitness. To allow, to allow myself to continue focusing on Nerd Fitness full time. So it takes a lot of hard work. Yeah. But when you're it's working on though, right? Yeah, when you're working on something that makes you happy and something that you're interested in, it doesn't necessarily feel like work. And even if it takes you three, four, five years of struggle and hard work, ten years, yeah. that still gives you the rest of your life to be happy. Right. Instead of forty years of uh, kind of you know, that was okay, and then you get to sixty and you're like, oh, crap, what the heck am I gonna do now? <laughs> Spend the time now and work on things, and if, they, and if you struggle with them and they don't work, then 
you know, identify other things that make you happy. Find a way to provide a service to somebody and make their lives better. When you can improve other people's lives in some great, unique way, that's when you can build a bit. That's what you can build a business around. So figure out what you're good at. See if there's a way you can make that something that other people need to know, and then and then just bust your ass and work on it and, and and help as many people as possible in any way possible. And do that repeatedly every day for a couple yeah. of years, and eventually it turns into something uh, worthwhile and something that, that you can actually build a life and and, and eventually less sell people actually notice and. and uh, more people actually join in and, and start helping you help others. And yep. It just becomes one big, let's help everybody party, right? Absolutely. Just like World Domination Summit. Yeah, it's contagious. It's contagious yeah. giving away giving away and helping and right. trying to help other people. It's contagious. And they, they, they in turn help their friends by recommending your stuff to them and, and becoming your you know, evangelists or whatever you want to call them. And, you know, it's it's very cool to see things like that, but it's a lot of work. It sure is. The, there was another speaker at uh, at uh, World Domination Summit. Who really needs no introduction, but um, it was Chris Brogan, and Chris Brogan actually talked about uh, the notion of superheroes and superpowers, and how all of us actually have some sort of superpower within us. And um, he he mentioned that if he could choose any superpower, um, he would choose the power of time travel um, because he would want to go back and tell his former self all of the lessons that he has learned today and tell him, you know, hey, watch out for this, watch out for that, and don't get too caught up in people's expectations other than, you know, what you expect of yourself. Um, just curious, if you could choose any superpower, what would what would you choose and why? Uh, if, we, if we can, if I can pick any superpower, any it's, got, superpower. it's gotta be flight. <laughs> yeah. Man, I grew up, I wore I wore a Superman costume for Halloween, I think four or five years in a row, like, no joke. I would wear Superman costumes on Tuesday just because of the thing to do. Yeah, yeah, four. Super Tuesday, right? Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> yeah, and I even did like the underwear on the outside, like the red undies on the outside yeah. to make me look like, I'm not even kidding. Um, because I wanted to be the Man of Steel. Like I loved, I loved this concept of this guy that was invincible. And, and he could fly anywhere. Yeah. Especially lately, now that I travel all the time. Yeah, yeah. You're stuck actually kind airplane. of Superman now. You're uh, <laughs> flying all around. So I do fly all around, but yeah. it would be very cool to be able to fly around without the use of an airplane. <laughs> I don't think that'll happen. Um, if I had to pick a more realistic superpower, I wish I was more productive. <laughs> Super productivity. Then I could be really productive in a couple of hours, get everything done, and then spend the rest of my day right. reading or learning karate. Right. <laughs> but yeah, man, flying. Flying or teleportation, just so I don't have to worry about spending six hours in an airplane anymore. Yeah, I could yeah. just snap my fingers and be there. Super. What about you? What would your superpower be? My superpower, my superpower would be being able to read people's minds. Ooh, read people's minds. It's dangerous though. It is, but it could be very helpful, That's especially true. if you're trying to help help someone. A lot of times, uh, I, I, one of the talks, uh, I think you were in the talk with uh, Derek Helmer. He mentioned. Um, Lots of times people will tell you what they want, even though that's not really what they want. Right. And I think, you know, having the power to read people's minds can really do a lot in terms of, you know, saving time and really, you know, getting getting to the root of the matter a lot of times. And, you know, we, we've got so many problems in the world, and, you know, a lot of it comes down to, uh, comes down to uh, miscommunication. Mm -hmm. Imagine how much miscommunication people who just kind of get directly... Like they just told people what they yeah. actually wanted? I know what you think. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what my superpower would be. All right, I like it. Um, so um, that actually wrap, wraps up uh, our interview for today. All right. Um, that's all, all we have. Maybe we'll uh, have a chance to meet up with you again somewhere in the world. Yeah, I want, next time we're doing this, we're doing something like the top of a mountain in Nepal. Or... Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, and there, there you have it, folks, uh, from our fellow friend, uh, world world traveler, travel hacking entrepreneur, um, and rebel leader from nerdfitness.com, Steve Camp. And I wish if this was, if this was, if I actually had a superpower this way, I'd be like, and goodbye folks, and <laughs> yeah. take off through the end, and then I'd be gone. And like, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Unfortunately, I can't do that, so I'll just have to sit here and wait and say, bye guys. Bye. Thanks everyone.